Um, good morning, um, everyone. Um, the title for this presentation is OpenStack CIC for Red Bull Um Before I start this presentation, um, well, given that the, during the morning we have an amazing demo for uh, CICD, um, I just want to just let you know that this is uh, this is something a little bit different that we they share they share during the morning, uh, but this is a little bit related to what we try to do during the first first slide of this presentation. I am going to uh, walk through the problem statement that uh, as a developer I faced. So hopefully you enjoyed and found this useful for you. Well, my name is Victor Morales. I work for Intel since 2011. Um, I am a OSIC cloud engineer. OSIC, maybe you have heard about that. OSIC stands for OpenStack Innovation Center. Basically, it's a collaboration between Rackspace and Intel in order to try to make, uh, to improve the, open, the enterprise readiness for OpenStack. I am also uh, OpenStack uh, GDL co-founder. Um, I was born in Guadalajara, Mexico. So there is an amazing com uh, community there, which we are trying to collaborate. Now in my case, I am, my participation is more remotely, but I am still trying to be present on most of the sessions. And well, my, my passion is obviously uh, system uh, doing programming. I uh, love to type uh, different programs in different languages. Uh, given that, I have been in different companies, and I have been seeing the same, the same principle, the same things. So basically, uh, as a programmer, you start with a solution, or try to, you try to provide a solution for a simple, uh, uh, for a company or uh, your, your, your um, customer. Or maybe you have an idea. You want to implement something new. You want to innovate in a specific areas. You want to do something creative in that specific way. So you start with that idea or with that solution, and you elaborate a lot of things. You basically you grab the information from the customer. You start to make your analysis. You develop the application. You create a couple of tests. You do a lot of things in that specific area. So. Yeah, you have the application, you test it, you deploy it. Maybe in this case you use OpenStack, and everything is perfect, right? Uh, the customer maybe is happy, or maybe that new idea is, um, is something that you are creating something cool. Um, but once that, that application is, is over there in production, and you have a lot, a lot of things there, uh, maybe the customer is so happy, and he wants to add new things. And those new things uh, definitely um, probably could compromise the, the existence or the, the current features that the application has. So the application is still fragile, and maybe adding these new things could be um, broke, broken some, some other parts of the application. So you have to be careful in order to fix those things. Or maybe you only have to fix a specific book, but again, uh, this application is fragile, so you have to be careful of doing whatever change that you have to do in this specific application. So um, thanks for, for a couple of um, guys. They developed these, uh, these technologies. Basically, we have continuous integration and continuous delivery or continuous deployment. Continuous integration uh, is a software development practice, which basically is focused in having continuously integrated the work that the uh, developers are doing. And what I mean for continuous uh, integrating those things, that means that also is uh, running a couple of tests, ensuring that it is not breaking anything. Um, so this is one of the benefits. Like you are ensuring that in every single commit or change that the developers are doing, you are verifying that it is not broken anything. But uh, and in the other hand, we have continuous delivery. Continuous delivery and continuous deployment is pretty much similar. Um, both the idea is to have all these changes, all these, um, yeah, all these changes that the, 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 um, the developers are doing, ready for, for in a stage where you can, uh, as a final decision, take those changes and deploy it in your servers. So this is nice, and, and this uh, methodology has been there. We know that um, 
Martin Flower, who um, basically wrote these quotes, uh, they have been doing a lot of research on that. So, great, uh, we have the solution, we don't have to remain to the well, but what is the problem? Well, the problem is, is like in the current market, we have several solutions, uh, all of them, in this case, all of these are open source solutions. Um, for example, in the left side, we have a couple of book trackers, like a Breadmine track, a Bookzilla, Mantis book tracker. In the middle, we have a couple of uh, continuous integration uh, tools. Um, just a few, and a few of them is right, Jenkins and, and Trade CI. On the left hand, we have uh, um, con system control versions. And the problem with this is like, given the, this amount of tools and different possible solutions, you have to figure out a way to connect all the single things. It is not easier. It is, it is something that you have to spend time to investigate. You have to figure out which is the best tool, the best tool that fits in all your necessities. Um, and and it's, it's time that you have to spend. Like, uh, if you have a small team and you're a startup, and a startup you have to um, spend your resources. Instead of those resources, spend time to, um, to continue doing, adding new features or solving books, you have to um, investigate or, or make that analysis for you. So that is the main purpose. That's the, that's the problem that, that I faced when I, when I was trying to uh, create my application in, in, for the thesis, for my master's. So for me, it was, was I have an idea like, uh, well, what about if I would be possible if I can just put an idea of this solution in maybe, let's say, that less than one day in production, but not only putting the, 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 the idea or the, 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 the problem there in, in, the, in the production. It would be amazing if you can maintain that application after uh, the deployment cycle and keeping all these things uh, or, or this fragile application there uh, during the whole application's life cycle. So uh, I think that most of the companies have these things. So for the solution of this problem, I try to, fa to divide in two, in two simple things. One of, one of the phases of this um, project, if I consider, was um, the analysis that I made in the several different components. Uh, and the second phase of uh, this project was how to integrate all these components and having a single solution. So, so for the components perspective, uh, I consider just a couple of components that I consider crucial for having a, a continuous integration uh, tool. In this case, uh, I consider an application automation server, which is responsible for orchestrating things, the version of control to store the different versions of the, the, the application, a build system, which is just uh, packaging the, the application and having in a, in a release uh, unit. A book tracking system, just something that you can track all the, 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 the problems or the new enhancement that you want to do it. Notification systems, something to uh, just let you know that if something is broken or someone has been reported uh, a failure. And account analysis reports. I, during the analysis that we do later, we consider that some of these tools depend depends on the languages that you are using. So for example, in the case of the build system, uh, if you are using for your application Java, maybe you, are use, you need to use Maven, Grail, or Ant, for example. Something different like if you use uh, Python, C Sharp, or whatever other application. So that's the reason that some of them we didn't consider for the first phase. Uh, for every single component, we try to just focus in, in five things. Uh, well, in this case, <laughs> says, sorry, in, five, in four things. Uh, the first thing, we consider that it will necessary to have uh, the proper license. I only consider uh, open source licenses mm. for obvious reasons. Um, so, but it's, it's good to know that we have to pay attention what is the license that we are using for, for this application. Features, uh, obviously, there are uh, 
there is a lot of uh, options or, or things on the market, but um, if you have more things to offer for these uh, uh, different components, it will be amazing. So we try to evaluate every single component in what are the features that it's offering. Level integration, what I, what I mean for level integration is, yes, it's nice to have a great component with a lot of features, but it's also important that this component has the ability to connect with other components. So that's the reason that we consider the level integration for, for this one. And the last thing, and not less important, that those components need to be installable. That means, um, yeah, there are many solutions in the market where you can only uh, they are exposing the services and you can connect them, but it would be better if you can have all these things in your own infrastructure. So um, I will go through the, every one of these components. It is not too much. So basically for the automation server, I uh, consider Jenkins. Jenkins has been there uh, many years ago. Um, actually, they changed the name from Hudson to Jenkins. The license is an MIT. We have been using the OpenStack community for a long time. Uh, it is uh, reliable. Um, the way to install things is, is pretty, they consider that it's easier. Um, but yeah, after a couple of uh, changes, yeah, it's, it is not as easy as we expect. Uh, the good thing about Jenkins is like a, has a lot of uh, plugins. Um, you know, the extensibility is amazing. Uh, we can also connect um, notification uh, systems. It's nice to have with the good uh, connectivity with uh, Git, uh, TBS, version. Anyway, Jenkins is, is a, a good actor here. By your hand, uh, talking about the book tracking system, well, at the end, uh, we use this specific article that publishes, uh, published in Wikipedia to make the analysis of the different versions. Uh, Rayman is, is offering a lot of features. Uh, it is more newer than others. Um, again, the, the license is GPL version 2, which is also good to have this, this version. Um, one of the amazing things is like you can also configure different things, and you can connect with, with Jenkins. Um, there are different notification interfaces, like uh, email, uh, Atom, um, XML, um, X MPP, which you can use with a uh, pigeon. Um, obviously, you can do a couple of tweets there. Um, for version of control, uh, well, the, the answer was uh, um, pretty simple. We use Git. Why Git? Because it's a distributed system. It is used by the Linux um, kernel development, also for OpenStack. It is distributed. It's, it's small. It's fast. Um, uh, it's also the new trend for developers, which is also nice. And um, I am also mentioning that in the version control software, um, I use Garrett. I know that Garrett is more for doing reviews and doing um, basically a code reviews. But something that we discovered when once that we were working in this thing is like uh, Garrett is offering inside of the the server, uh, Git repository. So for that reason, we consider it as a version of control. So what we did in the community, what we are doing in the community is like, uh, basically we are replicating the changes from the Garrett servers to the GitHub. So for that reason, Garrett is, it is here considered like a version of control, even when it is more like a, a, a code review system. So again, the, the, the license uh, for Garrett is Apache. Um, well, I mentioned that it has a Git integration. Um, support different databases, which is nice. Um, well, it's an active community, which is doing a lot of changes. The, the first architecture that I propose for integrate all these components, I could just consider four servers. Um, well, uh, three of them are hosting the different components that I mentioned before. Uh, one is for Garrett, the, the second one is for Jenkins and Redmine. And if you notice, just three of them has a floating IPs. So that means that they have visibility to, to external um, access to the, to the world. Uh, the third one only contains a database. 
Um, I know that this is a poor architecture, uh, but the idea is like this project uh, start collecting all the, the good practices and, and, and having better distribution and things like that. So, well, this, all these things are just related with the, the components. So for the next phase, um, I considered the way to deploy these things. And the way to deploy these, these components, um, I choose um, the deployment tool, Terraform. Uh, the reason that I choose Terraform, um, basically, uh, it is because Terraform is a cloud agnostic tool. So it's pretty nice if you have a chance to take a look. Uh, Terraform, basically, you describe a, a declarative way, like, OK, I want this, 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 all these things. And Terraform figure out how to uh, deal with the, the, the resources. So every time that I have to explain to my colleagues what is Terraform, it is more like a, having Puppet, but using Puppet in a, in a cloud. So usually in Puppet, you describe what are the things that you want in your server. And in this case, Terraform, you describe the resources that you need for your application. So it's pretty nice. Uh, I, I really like Terraform. Um, so what are the things that you have to do? Is I try to do simple. Um, there is a couple of uh, external environments, uh, variable environments that you need. Obviously, the, the way that you tell Terraform to connect to OpenStack. So all these things are just uh, specific things for, for, um, for this application. And just simple type Terraform apply. And this is going to connect to your server. And it's going to deploy all these four servers. And it's going to create the security groups, the floating IPs, the router, the post provisioning, everything. So. I will try to do a demo. I know that this sometimes is, is hard to, 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 to do in, in life, but let's see if that works. OK, hopefully this is big enough to. So basically, I'm going to do Terraform um, plan. In this case, um, it is going to check with my uh, cloud provider, in which in this case is OSIC. So obviously, it's going to check with the OSIC cloud. It is going to check if all these resources have been there and what is the current status. It's going to try to check what is the difference what, with the things that I am proposing. If there is a difference, it is going to say, well, in this case, there is no change because I have been deployed those things before. So I'm going to destroy it. Really? Oh, okay, so maybe well, maybe if I do it bigger. <laughs> well, given that I am destroying the resources that I have there, is waiting for a confirmation. So I'm going to destroy everything from the from the server uh, for, from the cloud. So in this case, he's going to. Uh, remove all the, the components. In this case, it's the security groups, the network, the subnet, the Florin IPs, all the things that I have, it is going to be destroyed. And what I want to show after the deletion of these, component, the, these resources is like the way that is the easy way to deploy all these things. So um, hopefully, this is not going to take too much time. OK, it's destroying the floating IPs. It's destroying the router in this case. Um, and it is almost there, security groups. Um, so which is nice is it's also following the, the cloud computing methodology like uh, that you, you, you only use the resources by demand. So basically, if your application, you don't need to keep all these things there. You can destroy the, the resources. And basically, you are not paying any, any more money to the, to the cloud provider. Um, I promise that it is, it is almost there. I don't know why it's, it's taking a little bit more. Oh, yeah. There is it. So for now, I don't have any resources. 
just the only thing that I want to show here is like how easy it is to, to deploy this development uh, infrastructure. So again, it's using Terraform, apply, and that's it. That's the only thing that you have to, to type. In this case, is, it is going to tell you all the, the, the details of your application. Um, so something that we can take a look. Uh, let me try to see. I just want to just look, work through the, the source code here. Uh, a little bit of the, the files that are deployed there is a couple of Terraform files. The only thing that you have to modify in this case is uh, the variable stuff, where it contains all the details that are used for uh, your, your cloud provider. In this case, uh, obviously, from different cloud providers, they are using different flavors or different images. Um, the external category is completely different, so it is something that you have to consider for, for, um, for your deployment. Um, obviously, the passwords are here, so it is not too much secure. But anyway, um, at the end, if I am looking at the uh, tree. Well, at the end, once that everything is, has been provisioned, uh, the output, it is showing the flooring IPs that you can use to connect your, your services. Um, unfortunately, the last images used in, in this specific cloud provider, it is having some issues, so I'm sure that it, I'm not able to access to them, but my initial test, it was working, so it is something I need to figure out later. Um, so continuing with the so, let me try to see if there is a way to, okay. So going back to the demo, oops, yep, sorry. Well, that was the demo. Um, I have a couple of future plans for this specific uh, project. Um, one of the things you notice, this, is a, this has a poor uh, architecture. Obviously, it, it requires a lot of uh, things to do there. We need to add a couple of load balancer, clusters, make m more resilience application. The security improvements, again, um, I am just using uh, plain text, so maybe it would be nice to increase the passwords. Um, to do um, better distributed ways to, to maybe also distributing the, the networks and that way also improve the security and stuff. Um, talking about cloud providers, given that Terraform is, used, is able to communicate with different cloud providers, it would be nice if this can be uh, tested in AWS or um, I don't know, uh, Google Compute. And the last thing is a mutable server. For this case, it's a design pattern that Martin Flower exposed. Basically, instead of deploying an instance and after the installation, you modify that instance installing new things. The idea is like having an image for every single uh, service. So, so in that way, the only thing that you have to take care of after the installation is just the configuration files of these things. So, basically, is all that I have. Uh, all these changes uh, has been submitted to one of the internal uh, OpenStack projects. In this case, is OS OPTS Tools Contribute. The changes are there. You can go there and you can uh, use it um, and modify, include new things. Actually, this is more a call for action. Uh, it would be nice if you. Um, share your experiences, share something in common, um, and maybe do it more better. I know that 
a lot of people could be benefit of those tools. So please uh, contribute in these uh, things and share your experiences. Uh, it's basically all that I have. I don't know if you have questions or comments or suggestions. All of these things are welcome. Uh, or this is the describe for my company. And um, well, this is the link. Um, if there is no other question, uh, thanks a lot for attending this session and have a nice day. <laughs>